until that day when all are one. Autobots, transform and roll out! Hello everybody, Pac-Man5698 is back once again for Armada Optimus Prime, and let me see if I can scoot everything closer. Okay, let's see if I can put it back together. That's at a better angle, maybe a little bit more. And there we are. Here is Armada Optimus Prime. Now, if of course I've mentioned Armada before. Again, I've explained it. I've explained the main things in my review of Armada Galvatron and Armada Starscream. But Armada Optimus Prime is pretty much G1 Optimus Prime, except a tad bit younger. He's older than animated, but not as old as G1. I'd say he's about entering his 30s, but then again, I'm using ages when I'm like really I'm comparing human ages to robots are like millions of years old but anyway Optimus Prime is the typical charismatic uh, hero you know he's calm he's in control but when he needs to get serious and pep up his men for war and battle and to collect the minicons you know he can do it he's voiced once again by Gary Chalk, by Gary Chalk reprising his role from Beast Wars Beast Machines and I believe Robots in Disguise but anyway, this is the vehicle mode slash vehicle and truck mode. And what I have to say is that it's a pretty good mode. And as you can obviously tell, this is the final battle version. The final battle version is pretty much the same figure as regular Armada Optimus, except for a few exceptions. His Minicon is no longer normal spark plug. It's just simply, it's a Corona spark plug or Corona spark plug, or, I don't know, a lot of people mispronounce it Corona, Cor Corona, whatever. And, um, his gun is even a different color. Now, why'd they decide to change the gun from the dark black to this light gray? I have no idea. But, of course, he is also, instead of your traditional gold slash yellow and gray and, uh, blue, he is now light gray, black, and red. And this is pretty interesting because for some reason on Amazon, although it's pretty much the exact same figure, the um, the usual price of Armada Optimus Prime on Amazon will go for about 113 to 144 bucks, while um, Armada Final Battle Optimus will go for about 155 But luckily, I got this uh, toy used from Transformers Land for only about $55. It's used, but you couldn't tell if you first saw this because it's in such good condition. And also, two other things. Sadly, he did not come with his card. However, I got a replacement. For just $1 on Transformers Land, I got the other Armada Optimus Prime card. Yes, this is classified as the Super Base slash Electronic Armada Optimus Prime, where there was another Armada Optimus Prime, which is more, t more posable, and it was used for repaints into Nemesis Prime. But this is his card, and I doubt they made a super base card uh, when Armada Optimus came out. It's still a pretty good card, and because I like to pose him in super mode, this is a good way of sneaking his regular mode in. You can also tell that his gun is... You can probably tell that his gun is... I think it's overrun. You can tell that his gun is overrun, but really the smokestacks form the exact same thing. Not to give away any spoilers. And to get the Minicon out of the way, Spark Plug here is... Actually, he's more of a reference to Bumblebee from G1. In fact, he's called Bumble in Japan. He's a pretty minicon, easy to transform. You just separate the legs. Let's see if I'm getting that shot. You separate them. Or are these his arms? No, those are his legs. However, then it kind of takes a weird turn. You bend this back, and then that can transport the rest of the body. Then you flip him over. That exposes his head, and then you kind of duck. Let's see. Duck, come on. There we go. And you're supposed to put it through this little um, hole that you make while bending it. So you put his head through that hole. Then it comes out. So, oh, there's his real head with his real body. Let's see. And now it's kind of... Okay, there we go. Then you bring the arms down. Snap him into place. And there is Sparkplug, or Bumble, or whatever, Corona Sparkplug. 
He's pretty identical to the um, last spark plug, except as you can now tell in his vehicle mode, he has two extra ridges on his front, and he also has more detail and even a turbo booster on his back. So in vehicle mode, he looks more like a stylized pre-Batmobile from the Burton movies. And also, he's pretty fun. It's also pretty cool. He can hang out on Optimus, and as you can tell, uh, let me get him trans um, transformed again, back into normal mode. Which can get kind of tricky, because sometimes it's kind of hard to get that head back, to get a good grip on that head. In his truck mode, he can go into a number of places, and it's not even mini ports. He could go here, or here, if you decide to leave these mini ports up, uh, down, I guess you could put him up. And also there are separate compartments. Let me turn him forward. And that reveals also a pretty silly gimmick with Armada Optimus Prime where there's some lighting and electronics in his head. But oh well, we'll get to that later. You open up these ports. In fact, let me get, let me actually kind of just show the trailer here. You open up these ports and you can put them in there. So yeah, we'll store them in there for now. Okay, spark plug. Okay, spark plug. Take a break. And his gun pretty much doesn't go anywhere, but you can put it here, and then you can rest like this little rectangle on. Uh, yeah, you can rest this little rectangle on a. Uh, it's uh, uh yeah on its back, though it's kind of hard to see. But there we go. Also, there's a laser here, but sadly it kind of gets blocked by his truck mode. And on both sides, you have really, really well painted on Autobot logos. And also, you've got the motor here, which activates the, which has the gears for the gimmick. And below, you can see four wheels, which do all the work, and treadmills, which are really just there for show. There it is. You also got some very, very nice molding here, especially on the tread lines with all with everything. And overall, it's a pretty nice trailer. Now, sometimes these legs, what obviously becomes the legs, can get a little loose and distracting, but I don't think it's as, you know, out of place or as uh, jumbled up as, uh, you know, Cybertron Optimus, Super Mode Optimus. By the way, I'm going to I'm gonna put a little video up where Wilku and I compare Armada and Cybertron Optimus. I still think that this is the better Optimus, just overall better design and better paint job. And now, actually, to discuss, and actually now, what's interesting is that, like mo mo like most pickup, tr uh, like most semi trucks nowadays. Sorry if I keep on saying pickup truck. Oi, you attach the peg into this little slot, which is like most what most semi trucks do in real life. And because of that, it's kind of loose, and you turn the truck, and the trailer doesn't stay parallel with it, much like many modern day uh, semi trucks. You know, they just don't go parallel. You actually have to make wide turns, which is what you see most of my trucks do on the highway. You know, I don't want to take you for a ride, but you get the idea. So yeah, then you remove it, and it also rolls well. Each of them roll well. The pick, the semi, the truck itself is really well done. It has a nice, um, it, it's overall again, it has a nice mold, and it actually has a li night little, a nice little interesting. Uh, uh, I guess I, I guess I could call it a reference to its own show where it says Optimus, let's see, it says Prime Convoy, Prime Convoy Monster, so it's like a monster truck. However, there is one problem. The typical under, his belly, or as I heard RuneScape, uh, RuneScape something who reviews Transformers, the undercarriage junk is pretty visible. You can even see a super mo mode head. No real effort to cover it. And of course, these fists are glaring from all sides except the front. However, luckily, these are hidden with his trailer, and he really only disconnects in the show when he doesn't when he's about to transform to super mode. And his fists, sadly, from the top are visible, but luckily, I guess the explanation is that nobody would suspect fists being in a in a smokes in a smokestack or part of a truck. And his fists are vis yeah again his fists are visible but oh well overall it's a nice truck mode I'd say and aside from the major you know electronics that weren't made to cover up I guess I don't know what else they could have done it's a pretty good mode and also the grill can attach reattach and overall yeah it's a pretty inter interesting truck mode and even if you want to you can put his 
gun in here, though you tell me how that's supposed to work. <laughs> now, for the transformation, we have a very, very, let's see if I can turn here, we have a, wa a very big instruction manual. Now, the toy from Transformers Land came with the manual, but part of the instructions, as you can see here, are ripped. They're ripped from all four corners except the bottom right one. And as you can see, there's a lot of stuff here. Just look at all that. Mostly playing the batteries in and the different modes he can do. But luckily I don't need these since he's still an easy to transform. It, he looks hard at first, but really all he is is uh, he's more long. It's more difficult. It's more a problem of how long he is to transform rather than what it is really to, um, yeah, rather than what it is to transform him. It takes, it really takes, it's more long than it is difficult. And it also activates one of his gimmicks. You turn this on. Yeah, at the bottom, you turn on, it requires four AA batteries, and there's a little sensor here, if you can see there, that little blank piece of plastic. So what you do is with um, Optimus here is that, let me zoom out a little bit. There we go. You flip the grill. Let's see. And you actually see a nice remo non-removable matrix of leadership. Clip it down. Put the arms forward. Let's see if I can get them forward. Okay, there we go. There we go, that's nice. And then you also are gonna wanna flip the fists, extend the legs. And then as you flip the shoulders out, also it's a good idea to aim it at the sensor. It should transform. Let's see if I can make it. Okay, now transform. Oh, you also have to separate these. <laughs> so, yeah, that's how it transforms at first, and be sure you don't make the same mistake I did by... You need to separate these these two pieces from the trailer when it's still in uh, its mode. You can damage it, but a lot of people say damages it, but really I didn't see it a whole lot. So, anyways, here is the trailer and it's a pretty interesting base mode so overall it has a lot of interesting stuff and you could do a lot of and also i can actually show one of its gimmicks right now if i have the right thing okay so this little container is is a little cage that's supposed to spring mini cons forward so spark i think spark no spark plugs in the other one the other one however just stores mini con but i can show you another gimmick on this side this one just simply stores mini cons Open them up. There you are, spark plug. Now, in some versions, it will pop. This a gun will pop out, but in my version, you more or less have to uh, actually activate it. So let me zoom down. Get a good angle of it. Whoa! <laughs> we don't want that. The floor is not as interesting as a giant robot. At least I think most people will agree. So you put it there. You put it on this hole, but sadly it doesn't pop out. But you can pull it out. You put it on there. There we go, and out comes a little gun. Kind of looks like the uh, sentries from the Amazing Spider-Man game or Battlefront 2. It's pretty interesting. You could have separate mini cons, uh, you know, using this, you know, stunning or attacking Decepticons. Pretty neat. Just flips back down, locks into place. And also another interesting thing is that just gonna move to the front on his. Let's see. In this area, you actually have an interesting panel, an interesting panel that's reminiscent to the main computer the Autobots use at their base on Earth. And, you know, it even has the globe here. I don't know if you can see it, but it also has some interesting sound effects. You press this little tab, this little addition sign, and... Pretty interesting. Now, there is this one. If you press this white button here, you get a... But that, that's not till the end, so we'll get to that later. Now for... I never understood really what this peg is supposed to do. I think you just clip it on. I think Optimus almost has as many mini-com ports as Megatron, but I think he's behind by just two or three. So I don't know what this does. You can't even move it forward, but... The cage here... 
you are, you it's kind of like the same one. You pick it up there. You exit. You know, you pull it up. Put your minicon there, and you press this little gray tab here, which is supposed to activate a cage. And whoops, that bad thing. Just got rushed in there. Ugh. Bad too. It's at, it's kind of at a bad angle. Let's see if I can do it like this. Boom! It springs out your minicon. So there's spark plug. Kind of lame and kind of lame and rush, but oh well. It's not the best. Some of the good ones are here. Let's see if I can raise it up even further. Let's raise the roof. Let's raise the roof, Autobots. Where you move it, where you show, where this is the top platform, you press this little red switch and out comes a laser. Now, you, some people could say it's a laser, but, you know, some people say it's, no, you drag minicons on here and then you kind of just, whoa. Oh. Then they fall to the floor. They fall into the uh, to the abyss as the floor, but I don't think that's supposed to happen. However, you just you know you could shoot around. Another mini con can be controlling it. Pew pew pew, and you just let's see, clip it back in there. Now this other oh speak of which I forgot. Also another cool thing is that the gun actually serves its first purpose. You take the gun. And there you go, you have another rotational extending turret. Sadly, it can't light up, though. <laughs> it can also move. It can get more flat. <laughs> you can even fold it up and put it on there so that's stationary. However, the trailer will not close because this entire platform gets flat. And even if you put it on this neat... I think it was designed for this, like to close, but it can't. You put it on here, and there we go. It's just kind of latches onto there. However, I think this is more a place where you just have more mini cons, you know, just to stand around. And for this button, yeah, let's see, no, it's okay. There's a little. Let's see if I can find. There's a little. Yeah, there's a little. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, you can see it. There's a little mini con peg here. So you attach a mini con and you push it forward. And then, kind of makes more of a shotgun, shotgun sounding laser. Let's see, uh, activate. So there it is. And I think I've gone over most of it, but finally there is his knee cannon. You bring it up. And of course it has its own little projectile, which looks a lot like Generation Lug Nuts. It can rotate 360. It can fire a missile. Actually, let me see if I can get the camera. Let's see if it's aiming well. Ah, uh, almost. <laughs> almost. But oh well, you get the idea. And I think that's it for its base. It's a pretty cool base. It's a little, it's gimmicky, but you know what? It's supposed to. It's supposed to have a lot of stuff you can play with and make the uh, overall play value of this uh, base, you know, uh, overall just more exciting, more fun. So, you know, there's that. Now, here you have, let's see, Optimus Prime, at least, oh, whoops, there we go, here you have Optimus Prime, it is uh, baseball, actually, you gotta push these up, and here you have Optimus Prime, now, he's a pretty good, he's a pretty good Prime, and overall, he may not be the most articulate, but he's one of the most show, show accurate, they didn't get him wrong with um, animated or like some animated toys or even G1 or G2 or Beast Wars or Beast Machines toys where it kind of, there was kind of a design change and then there was kind of a, you know, a weapon change. Well, there is kind of a weapon change, but it's not that big. Here you even got his grill and you have a matrix of leadership. Some people can complain that he can't remove it, but you would lose it anyway, so it's probably best that they kept it like this. And also, you have these two pegs that stick out, which is, uh, yeah, kind of weird. However, his fists can bend. You can hold him. He can even operate the best. And his shoulders have 360 articulation, so you can have him, you know, raising a fist up in the air. I, w I will bring you down, Galvatron. And also, you even have... Actually, this 
kind of, I think I know why I did this gimmick, this gimmick. In the show, his main attack was putting his hands together, cuffing them, and then from these smokestacks, he would shoot out a beam, which is like a miniature sonic rain boom. They're like little sonic rain boom, sonic rain boom M&Ms that explode. However, because his articulation is limited, you can't bring them together. You take them off. And what's kind of and what's actually cool in its own right, just as cool as his move, is that you take them off, bring them together, and they form a neat little pistol, which kind of reminds me actually of a steampunk gun. It may not be the alchemist gun, but it is still kind of like a steampunk gun. You can put it in his arm, and then he's just blasting Decepticons to kingdom come. Come on. There we go, and actually one cool pose that you can get him into is that if you aim it down, and if he's bending down, at, yes, he does have any articulation, you can just say, You, who are without mercy, now plea for it. I thought you were made of sterner stuff. So there's that. So you're gonna take it off. Ah, come on if I can, there we go. And another downside is that, the sh of course, the shoulders make him seem hunched. This is definitely a very hunched over Optimus Prime, and his back, you know, is kind of wide, but, oh, well, I kind of forgive it. It is a simple transformation, to be honest, which is why I enjoy it, and it's still show accurate. And another cool, uh, one cool gimmick is that you can, uh, you press down on this little button here, and it moves his mask. Which is kind of weird. This more this belongs in a G1 toy. Like he had like he had a mouth in Animated and Beast Wars and Cybertron, but he never had a mouth in G1. Or, he never had a mouth in G1 or, or Armada. Like G1 should have this gimmick. Animated and Armada's masks never move when they talk. So why is this one? Do you want to have it? But still cool. He also has nice red eyes. But one little nitpick is that okay. This whole repaint Optimus went through was in. The Armada episode, I think it was three episodes before the series ended, called Origin, which is setting up the final battle between Optimus Prime and Galvatron, but, uh, that's another downside, these can get kind of loose if you want to position them the exact same way the fists, that'll do, but his mask was originally silver, but in this repaint, for some weird reason, it's red, which I do not understand. It's a nitpick, but it would have been nice to see this mask painted silver instead of red. The legs, again, not much articulation. You're really supposed to keep them together, and if you separate them, you have a risk of trans. You make a risk of transforming the base, even if it's turned. Yeah, unless it's turned off. But they still bend at the. He still bends at the knees. Fairly good articulation for somebody who's so stiff. And you can actually kind of have him in a cool pose, which is like he's gasping for air during the final battle with uh, Galvatron, or in any battle really. Let's see. So yeah, bring them together. I think this one... Oh, one of them's kind of shortened. There we go. So there he is, standing at full height. So overall, still a good Optimus. And while he may not be the most articulate and slightly annoying, he's still a good figure overall. So let me detach these smoke stacks or screens or whatever. Yeah, smoke screen's one of the name of the Autobots. <laughs> I think it's supposed to go like that. Yeah. Oh, no, it's supposed to go like this. Let's see, come on, get in there. Ugh. Okay, there we go. So, yeah, also, he has a little button here, which is, where his light, where, like, his, his feet can light up, but, of course, you know what that's for. Now, for the final mode, which is his super mode, this is where, hopefully, if I can get through this, then I'm done with the electron gimmick. If it screws up, then it's going to be slightly, it's going to be pretty annoying. Let me see if I can find the sensor again. Not the sensor ship, we fought that earlier in, early, early this year. There it is. Okay. So, anyway... What happens here is that you pretty much transform him back into his uh, vehicle mode. Let's see, bring it up. Careful, this grill has tendency to, you know, fall off. 
And actually, you're going to want to bring them more... You're going to want to bring them... Actually, you still keep his fists up, but bring them more towards, you know, his... Uh, Yeah, towards, uh, you know, where he's facing the camera, whatever direction that is. <laughs> yeah, forward. And then you do the classic gimmick, I'm going to say this, transform and combine, and out come his fists. Now that's pretty much it, and, okay, come on, please work. Please work. You disconnect the legs, and that didn't do anything. Oh, there we, ah! Okay, guys, I recently made a discovery. It would be a good idea to leave this computer right here down during the gimmick, the transformation. Now, let's see if I can actually transform him into the lower portion of his body. Okay, okay, come on. Make it work. Got him all ready set up. So, do it now. There we go. Now, in order to make sure I don't screw anything up, that's pretty much it. I'm gonna... Well, no, I'll save that for later. Yeah, I have, still have some stuff to do. So there is the top portion of his body. All you have to do right now is, is bend these. Then you... Hmm, there, okay, there we go. Then you clip the other sections together. Oh, no. There we go. Then also you're gonna want to flip it up this time. Uh, stop making noise. Then for the rest of Optimus here, you just gonna wanna yeah bend these down even more. Then rotate his shoulders, pull it pull them down. Now let's see. These arms can get confusing at times. Oh there, there it is. Turn around and whoop. There's his gimmick. <laughs> let's see if I can get it right. I think I got it. Just a matter of rotating them. No. There we go. You gotta pull them down some more. And there we go. There is the portion of his body. Now, this is the hardest part by far. Getting him balanced onto those two little things. Actually, let me see if I can... Okay, that should be good. So, we may have... Oh, we may have to see a fast forward. Oh, also good idea. Bend his shoulders... Then there's not able well, these become part of his shoulders, his little smoke screens up. And let's see if I can get this. Fast forward time or no. Let's see. And there I go. And actually there's supposed to be gimmick, but let's see if I can activate it one more time. Nope. Uh, it's not happening, but it happened numerous times, but really the head, let's see, pops up, and then you extend his, um, there we go, actually it's kind of a bad angle because, but actually, yeah, you extend his little, actually, and this guy is really, really tall, so you're supposed to extend these antlers or these, ma these masks out or whatever, and, whoa, he is... This guy is big. He is ginormous. This no wonder this was a leader. This was considered a leader class. So yeah, there is Armada Optimus Prime in his super mode. Now this is where the toy really, really, really gets good. As you can see here, it is extremely show accurate. I cannot believe it's such a complicated process, even in the show, and it still looks as good as always. As you can see here, brilliant paint job. Got that great Autobot logo on the front, uh, and I actually kind of like it better than the idea of just one being on a shoulder, that nice big chest piece. And also, uh, again, you have his head, which looks awesome. He's, he's got that look. He's got that classic look in his eyes. That means business. Even in the show, it's like, let me see if I can get a good shot of it. There we go. It's a really good face. It, it just fills you with fear. It's like, yeah, babies, Optimus Prime means business now, and I'm gonna give, and I'm gonna show you all business. 
And the only real downside about this is something I don't really consider downside because I use this guy for posing. I really, if it gets me in a cool, only if it gets me in a cool position will I care about articulation or posability. And here actually his posability isn't exactly the best. You cannot, of course, move these legs except for little jiggles. I guess if you disconnect them you can, but that'll just make him look silly. And of course... He can rotate, he has no waist articulation, obviously, but he can move his shoulders, so these smoke screens kind of get in the way. He can bend at the elbows, but not that far. Da, 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 da. Open Armada style. And he do, does the same for this one. Let's see. But however, his head can rotate all the way, so cue the Mechagodzilla music. You spin my head right round, right round, so... There we go. It's really hollow in the back, as you can see here. Pretty hollow. You know, you can see the stuff. You can even see the computer and the empty space where his head is stored. Let's see, right there. And, of course, they've got all these lasers and stuff. So he's kind of clunky when looking at him from the back. But when looking at the back, ah, dang it. Uh, yeah, sorry, my dad just called, so, ugh. But anyway, this front view is when the when the... You know, the toy really starts to shine. Really well done. Great paint job. Great mold detailing. And he's even got his knee... He's got his knee... Yeah, his, uh, his projectile on his knee reminiscent to that of uh, Mechagodzilla from uh, the Showa series. In fact, let's see. Can I get it at the camera? Ah, uh, uh, close or whatever. But one thing that always mm, kind of distracted me was that... Why is it that this port is painted entirely silver and, let's see, when you insert this projectile, all of a sudden, again, they're two different things. So, it's asymmetrical, but it's not asymmetrical in a good way. They couldn't just give this a shade of red, so that was pretty silly. Also, at first, I thought this was broken, but I've seen another review. No, let's see. I know it's small, it's extreme nitpick, but... Let's see. Why is this circle only three-fourths? It's like only three-fourths of a circle. It looks like Pac-Man. Why couldn't they insert a full circle? You may be thinking it's broken, but no, actually. This is actually how it is. I saw another review, and he had the exact same pattern. I saw a picture on Google. This, yeah, this thing is supposed to be three-fourths, which is pretty, pretty odd. So I didn't understand that. Also, another cool thing is that... Well, not another cool thing, because I just said a weird thing, but, of course, you've seen this, you know, it lights up, but why? Well, of course, you get his gun. By the way, this gun is what really gives Armada Optimus the edge over Cybertron Optimus. Like, all of Cybertron Optimus' guns, yeah, they're cool, but this one gun is the I'm a Man gun. If you see the scene in the uh, t series where he just, like, locates the Decepticon, shoot them, shoots them, boom! I am a man! So, yeah, there's that. Then you, again, another thing is that his arm's kind of weak and it kind of just falls down. Not much you could do, do about it. But however, there is one clever thing. You can take the smoke screen back, bend his shoulder, then clip it back in, and now he stays more in place. So you do this, and let's see, it's more effective when I'm looking at it from the side. Let me see if I can turn off the light. It's going to get very dark. The, go the ghosts are going to come out. And you press the shoulder button. And, uh, where is the shoulder? No, yeah, the shoulder button. Whoa! Uh, there we go. And it lights up. And you have an interesting lighting effect, even if it's just coming from his hand source and it doesn't extend all the way. You could do the same with the smoke sack pistol, but really, let me turn on the light. There we go. I just think the smoke stacks make him look more intimidating here. Yeah, kind of add to the uh, overall, kind of, not cheese factor, but the overall cool, cool factor. So, in terms of how he's put together, he's put together very well. Obviously, he's not the most articulate, but he's not supposed to be. He's more supposed to be a trophy than to be played with. And he looks very, very well done when he's played with. And like in the show, he looks even better when you have a good Corona spark plug here. And in the show, it usually, when he fired his gun, it attached to his shoulder. Although this is one of the few Transformers where the Minicons don't really... Well, they can do something, but only in this base mode. When, when he's like this, 
all it really is is for show. So there's that. It can even lock in if you put this shoulder piece down. So how do I grade this thing? Well, in terms of a toy, if you have kids that want to play with this, don't go. And it's really hard to get this guy at a fair price. I got mine for 55 bucks. That's literally a one-of-the-kind deal. The rest are for 113 to 144 bucks, or even 155 or 200 This guy was $55, and I just want to say, even then, his instructions were ripped, but... And it did come with the box or the card, but that's just about it. I mean, technically, I already have the card. You can get Optimus. You can get Optimus and Overon for just one dollar, and that's it. And actually, and you can get this card. And actually, his like that version of Optimus, the one with Overon, actually can attach to the, <coughs> to the trailer, which is cool. So as a showpiece, like as a showpiece, if you just want a symbol, if you just want a perfect to a good um toy that symboli symbolizes the era, the era of Transformers between the Michael Bay films and G1. This is the toy to get. He is awesome. He looks great with his gun. His paint job is phenomenal. Really well done. His face, incredibly show accurate. Definitely one of the better toys from Armada. And he doesn't come with Minicon gimmicks. He, he only comes with, I'd say, two Minicon gimmicks, which are for the guns and the sound. So there's that. If you're not big on Minicon gimmicks, and he doesn't have a whole lot of them. And why am I filming this at such a low angle? Let me get a better angle of him, of his head. So there we go. Oh, God, this guy is so far away. So there's that. So overall, how do I rate this guy? How do I rate Armada Optimus Prime? I would have to give him a... Hmm. I'd say I would have to give him hmm, a 9.7 out of 10. Yeah, he kind of loses some stuff because he looks awkward at some points. But then again, it's all for show accuracy. It still makes for a good toy. As a figure, 9.7 out of 10. As a toy itself, I'd say about an, a 7.9 or a 7.8, which is a C. But as a figure, which is what I'm using him for and the grade I'm giving him, this guy is a definite A. If you could find this guy at a good price with everything, with his, his gun and his minicon at least, and also the smokestacks, pick him up because he is a gem. This, I think, is the more primer, Optim is the primer Optimus Prime. So there is Armada Optimus Prime, who does not want to keep his own card. As here's the official certificate of Pac-Mania for being a great Optimus Prime, and that's my review overall. And I'll see you all later. And so yeah, bye. Support Cybertron. Subscribe.